Hey there, you little chicken nuggets. Big Carl. Welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Grow TV. <laughs> cough, cough. Oh, hey, Carl. Oh, hey, Andy. How have you been? Good. All's good. Great. What are you, what, what are you been up to? Nothing. Nothing at all. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's been a... It's been a wild week here too. It's just been busy, 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 man. I just we just got off uh, a trip to back from a trip actually from uh, Phoenix. Saw some family. Oh man, it is cinnamon roll. You would not believe. And I just really when I I, I came home. Andy. Just, Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> What's up? I have something I really want to talk to you about. Okay. Oh. Okay. Great. Uh, I kind of I kind of want to tell you in like the you know the wow what the 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 what. Oh, you meant like the dreamy, whimsical, uh, cool place that we go and talk about the story. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go for it. Ah, thanks. All right. It all started this morning when I woke up. Haha, <laughs> much better. Anywho, first thing I got this morning was some pretty bad news. Apparently my 46-year-old pet goldfish, James Pond, is in the fish hospital with a broken fin. It was heartbreaking news and it really made me sad. Oh no, that is officially the worst news I've heard all day. <laughs> did you just make a joke? I'm sorry, I don't know why I did that. Please continue. All right, so anyways, I was really upset and I- I thought it would be thinny. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's the last one. Continue, please. I was very sad. But whenever I feel sad, I read the Bible. And I began to read the story of Elijah. Oh, cool. Which one? Well, it's in 1 Kings chapter 19. It starts off with this guy named King Ahab, and he's talking to his wife, Jezebel. You see, moments ago, Elijah showed everyone that his God was a true God. He did that by praying to God to send fire down from heaven. So, okay, so let me guess. King Ahab was telling Jezebel how about how great God was. I wish. Ahab didn't like worshiping the one true God, and that made him want to hurt Elijah. Because Elijah was a brave prophet who loved and only listened to God. And Elijah defeated all the false prophets who worshipped the wrong God. Ahab told Jezebel about everything he had done. So Jezebel sent a message to Elijah and it said this, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Whoa, looks like Elijah was in trouble. What was his reaction? Elijah was terrified. He went deep, deep into the woods, and twice he was woken up by an angel. He was given food so he could continue his journey. How long was his journey? Elijah walked for 40 days and 40 nights. It was wild! And then he ends up going to a mountain called Horeb. He set up camp inside of a cave, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the voice of God said, What are you doing here, Elijah? Wow, what did Elijah do? He pretty much told God that he was frustrated and sad. Sad about how the people of Israel turned their back on God and that he was the only prophet left. But God told Elijah to come out of the cave because the Lord was about to pass by. No way. So Elijah stood on the mountain and an incredibly strong wind passed him. That was God, right? God was in the wind? Nope, but right after the wind, an earthquake shook the ground beneath Elijah's feet and it tore the, where the, where the rocks apart. W was God in the earthquake? Nope, but then there was a mighty fire that passed by. That, that, that was God, right? That had to have been God. Wrong, but God passed by next. Not in a mighty wind, not in an earthquake or a fire, but in a small, gentle whisper. A whisper? Ser ser a whisper, seriously. Right? Totally unexpected. But it was exactly what Elijah needed. He was at his lowest point and thought it was useless for him to even go on. But it was proven that day God comforts us when we are sad. And that's what cheered me up today. I know it's silly, but I was really sad about my goldfish being in the hospital. And if I'm being super duper real with you, Andy, I've been sad about stuff happening in my family and stuff I've seen going on in the world. I don't like to admit it, but it helps to see how Elijah shared how he felt and how God responded. 
God wasn't mad about his feelings. And God knew how to help him feel better. I bet God could do that for me too. For all of us, I guess. But God comforted me like God comforts everyone. Hey there kids, today's big idea is God gives me comfort when I feel sad. So let's shout it out loud on the count of three, all right? One, two, three. God gives me comfort when I feel sad. Excellent job, everyone. Now, Carl. Yeah, Jada? Can I ask you a question about your fish? Sure. Do you find him in Finland? It's not funny. Just a joke, Carl. Okay, deep breaths. <laughs> I better get out of here. I'll see you kids later. Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of